Hi, I haven't been uh, vlogging for a while because I was not feeling so good and I had uh, several questions in my mind and uh, I needed time uh, by myself to find the answer and among those questions uh, of course what is that has caused uh, the cancer again after six years uh, now after three months of treatment I needed to take a break in the Karolinska Hospital, where I'm treated, which is believed to be one of the best hospitals in Europe, they think I'm a car. Um, yes, a car, with a mechanical breakdown. I wouldn't understand otherwise how they treat cancer as a physiological problem only. A physiological problem which needs some chemicals and mechanical solutions. Thirteen years ago, I was visiting the Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami. And I was amazed to learn about their holistic approach in the treatment of cancer and heart disease. The patients were treated medically while at the same time they were offered psychological, hypnotherapy, nutrition, acupuncture and other treatments. In the Karolinska Hospital of Udinge in Stockholm in 2011, the specialists treat cancer like a physiological illness to be treated only medically and pharmaceutically. To the extent that it doesn't matter if the patient feel, feels good or bad about the treatment or the hospital condition during the treatment. <coughs> Since the patient, as I said, is like a car. Something that, when it breaks down, should be mechanically fixed with some new chemicals and spare parts. So I had to become a bad patient and disappear from the hospital care for two weeks, stopping the medication to think and clear my mind. No matter the infections I got because of my low immune system and the several calls I got uh, from the hospital because I didn't leave twice a week my blood test, I needed time on my own. <coughs> there has been many questions and uh, one has been fight the cancer or try to reconcile. Most of the therapy nowadays is about fighting the cancer, destroy the cancer cell kill the cancer. Now, it's our body that generates the cancer cell, and then the question is, uh, is it good to have this fight, to have this killing the cancer, or is it better to find what is the source, what is the, why the cancer has started in the first place, and try to work on that, and uh, find some kind of agreement with our body. So the next question, of course, is physiology versus psychology. Can personality affect us at a cell level? And if it can, what is the relationship between our personality and the physiological development of illness, like cancer? Those were the main questions in my mind before I started my break, during which I also tried as much as I could to isolate myself from my surrounding to be able to think and clear my mind. I strongly believe that as long as we are alive, we have the opportunity to change at any moment. <coughs> so what happens with our personality, with our identity? Are those also things that we can change or are we stuck with them and they are unchangeable? So we, we will die with the same personality and the same identity, being the same person all our life. I don't think so. I think we can actually change both personality and therefore the identity of the person. In contemporary psychology, uh, I've studied what we call the big five factors of personality, which are five broad domains or dimensions of personality which are used to describe human personality. The big five factors are openness, conscientiousness, extraversion, agreeableness and eroticism which is also referred as emotional stability. <coughs> openness um, involves active imagination, aesthetic sensitivity, attentiveness to inner feelings, uh, preference for variety and intellectual curiosity. Conscientiousness has many definitions. Is one of those uh, is awareness. Others are the trait of being careful or the quality of acting according to the dictates of one's consciousness. Um, 
It includes such elements as self-discipline, carefulness, <coughs> thoroughness, organization, deliberation, the tendency to think carefully before acting, and need for achievement. Extroverts tend to be gregarious, assertive, and interested in seeking out excitement. Introverts, in contrast, tend to be more reserved, less outgoing, and less sociable. Agreeableness is a tendency to be pleasant and accommodating in social situations, while neuroticism is an enduring tendency to experience negative emotional states. <coughs> so those are the big five factors of personality. How often have you heard yourself or others saying expressions such as this is my personality and I cannot change it, this is the way I am, I can't change my identity, or I can't do this because this is not me. Now let's imagine that you can believe as much as I do that as long as we are alive we can change at any moment. Now this belief gives us the permission to experience our own possibilities. We all deep inside believe that we can do much better than what we are doing. I think we all secretly believe in our potential. I believe there is a divine spark in all human beings. And this gives us the possibility to design our life the way we want it. We can design our future based on the way we think and act. Think and act greater than your own environment. Think and act differently in the same circumstances. Otherwise you will keep on reproducing the same environment and the same results. <coughs> Reflecting on my illness, what I have realized now after I got cancer for the second time in six years is that it was my way of thinking and acting that made me sick. After the first time I got sick I made changes. I thought I was looking at life differently and in a way I did. But the only thing I haven't changed which is the cause of me getting sick again is my way of thinking and acting. The habit of being myself. <coughs> and that is difficult to change, but it's not impossible. What I learned studying psychology was that approximately by the age of 30, most personality changes have occurred. Our identity and personality are formed, and that is the way we are. Our brain through our senses has experienced already most of the things reality has to offer. We have formed and reinforced a neurological set or mindset which can deal more or less with any given situation reality has to offer. Meaning we have stopped learning and we will probably respond to any given situation with a fixed set of strategies which will give the same outcome. The result of that is that our reality will not change, since our way of thinking and acting will be the same. We evaluate circumstances in an emotional way according to how it feels, comparing the new circumstance to all the experiences we have accumulated. By doing that, we create a pattern of feeling, looking back to similar experiences, reproducing what we feel is an adequate strategy which leads to reproduce a set of actions which will create a similar reality and here we confirm again this is who I am this is how I do things this is my reality and this will just repeat for the extent of my life now if you don't like how your life is or if you believe there is space for improvement in you then you have to change yourself if you don't do that you will very likely repeat creating the same reality for yourself. If you want to change yourself, you have to start changing the way you think and act. You have to learn new things and force your brain to work in new ways. Thinking <coughs> produces chemicals which produce emotions. Happy thoughts, great thoughts make you feel happy and great. Sad thoughts 
fearful thoughts make you feel sad and insecure. The thoughts produce chemical messages, which are send a, which are send a signal to the body, so that we start feeling in the same way we are thinking. The brain receives continuously feedback messages from our body, telling the the way our body feels. And when our body feels in a certain way, it will produce thoughts to match the way we feel. So it becomes a cycle. Thoughts affect the physiology of our body and the way we feel. This state of feeling sends back messages to our brain, which produce thoughts to match that feeling. This will lead us to think the way we feel and feel the way we think. And this cycle will produce more chemicals, which will just reinforce it. And it becomes a catch-22. The feeling and thinking cycle will bring us to think the way we feel, and if we can't think differently and better than the way we feel, we won't be able to change. The state of being we create and reinforce over time becomes our personality trait. By the time we reach 30 years old, the state of being we are used to have will define what we think our identity is. Now, to change, it takes a strong and persistent act of will, a disciplined repetition of controlled thoughts and action, which will lead to a change of our being. We have to break the habit of the old self to create a new self, the new self we have designed. It's not easy, but it is possible, if we want and are willing to put effort. I'm working on changing myself, and I'm going to describe you what I will do and how in my next vlog. Thank you.